Hi everyone, I'm May Potter and you join me at Medlands on day one of the Silverfish Cup. The anglers on this festival, the, the lineup is outstanding. We've got Alan Scoffhorn, Andy Bennett, Jamie Hughes, that's just to name a few. And another exciting little bit is Bresbet has got involved so you lovely lot can put a few pennies and bet on your favourite angler. Let's go see him. Let's go see him. Peg 19 on the big lake, lambs down for me for the first day of the festival. Um, I'm happy because there's definitely a lot of fish in this area and there, there has been all winter. Um, the one thing that I'm a bit stuck with at the minute before the start is I don't really know what to do. We're right on that cusp of the change between sort of winter mode and proper spring mode. I mean, people have been catching bream on meat and corn and stuff, but by the same token, you've got the natural bait. So at the minute, I'm still sort of making my mind up as to what I'm going to do, but I think everyone here is going to have an amazing day's fishing. Conditions are perfect. Westerly, southwesterly winds, mild as hell. Um, I think it's going to be a show-stopping festival. I really do. Really excited to get started. The buzz on this event is phenomenal. The standard of anglers, I took my autograph book into the drawer this morning and it's absolutely full. It's frightening, but um, it's, a, it's a great experience and amazing to fish against these guys. So... Even if you don't win out on this kind of thing, you learn absolutely loads. And a little exciting addition is breast bets involved, um, which I've never fished many matches where there's bookies, but back in the day I hear a lot about it, Billy Knott and people like that turning up at matches, and it definitely adds something to the event. So lovely to see that as well. Gaz has done a great job with it. Can't wait to get started. Well, it's just brilliant to be here. Medellin's fishery and a proper smash-up. I'm going to say... I don't think I've ever fished a festival with as many quality silverfish anglers on as this one today. And where I've drawn in this section alone, we've got Steve Harwood on the MPEG, Des Ship next to him, uh, Steve Seaborn, Rich Hoskins, two brilliant silverfish anglers. I'm next to a world champion, Simon Fry, and that's before you move down to the bottom end of the section where there's Matt Godfrey and others. It's just a real who's who of fishing. Um, and that's what I love about this kind of event, this kind of of match fishing. It's going to be a real smash up today. Even better, the fact that Bresbit have got involved with this um, and obviously there's been a bucky running so that's made things even more interesting. But the sun's shining. I don't think I've drawn the best of areas from what people tell me. It was a little bit iffy here um, on the last couple of matches but that said, one thing I do know about this place, I've not fished it much, but one thing I do know is you never really know what's going to happen. The fish can turn up anywhere so I'm still confident and uh, we'll see what happens. So day one for me and I'm on the deep bit. It's dead weird, isn't it? Whenever you go to venues, you're always on certain areas. Me being a bit of a drawback, I tend to draw this bit quite a bit. And I'm on 15 today, which I think it's probably the deepest peg on a venue, which I'm not too sure about. Really happy to be here though, and it's quite a, a good section. So really, really looking forward to it. Hoping it's going to be a, a proper positive pellet corn, catch lots and lots of slimy poppadoms with a bit of luck. But as we know, it's first day, so it's all about just winning that section. That's all I want to do. So hopefully, I can sneak it and then give myself a chance tomorrow. Just for all you lovely lots that have risked a few quid on us via Brez Bet, it has been nice to have that involved. Bit of betting, in it? It's like old school again, isn't it? I love all of that going on. But yeah, day one, hopefully this game is feed and hopefully we catch a load. So, first day of the On The Flyer Silver Cup at Medellin's and I don't know how I've drawn. It's a peg. I think I'm one away from where Jamie was on the final last year, which he just about won it from. So it can't be a bad area at the right time. But... I've drawn in a section of basically all the Team England. I've got like Alan next to us, Sean Ashby, I think Cam Hughes is in a section as well. So obviously they're, they're the lads fishing it week in, week out. So definitely going to have a work cut out. Um, tactics wise, just going to fish pellets and it's either going to work or it's not. So I'm going to like do all right or come last in section. So that's the plan. Uh, maybe catch a few short on casters, but yeah, obviously makes it bit of a different event this year with Gaz getting uh, Bresbet involved so apparently some people have decided to waste money on me so sorry about that um, but yeah we'll see how it goes hopefully they want to eat some pellets and if not we're screwed. Welcome to the On The Flyer TV Meadowland Silver Cup. This festival has fast become one of the most popular events that we here at On The Flyer TV organise. This is a two-day silverfish event decided on section points. This festival sees 55 of some of the UK's top anglers battle it out over two days to see who will be crowned the 2024 
medal and silver cup champion. We have some of the best commercial anglers in the UK with the likes of Des Ship, Andy Bennett and Jamie Hughes. Also some of the current England float team in Cameron Hughes, Sean Ashby and Simon Willsmore. We've even got Mr. Five Times himself, Alan Scoffhorn, throwing himself into the mix. As mentioned, this festival would be decided on section points, with five sections across the entire venue, incorporating both Lambsdown and Warren Pool, with two sections on the deeps, one section on Pump Bank, one section on the Far Bank, and a section on itself down on Warren Pool, with 11 anglers in each. The angler with the lowest accumulative score over the two days would be the winner. At Meadowlands, Lambsdown is the deeper of the two lakes. Warren is much smaller and much shallower compared to Lambsdown. The Deeps is an area where many anglers normally like to draw. This prolific area, as the name would suggest, is the deepest part of the lake and often holds those better head of skimmers. Day one saw probably one of the mildest days in February. With that in mind, Many anglers opted for expander pellets over micros, thinking that this would help to weed out those better quality bream. Natural baits were still going to play an important part in the festival for many though, with many anglers opting to feed two lines long, one with expanders and micros, whilst the other ground bait casters and maggots. The short line at Meadowlands really can come into itself in the early stages of the match. Where the wind allows, chucking maggots out of your hand short really can help you get a head start with the quality ropes that are on offer at Meadowlands. The feeder is also a tactic that you just simply cannot afford to ignore at Meadowlands. Many anglers such as Des Ship chose to start on the tip whilst they were waiting for their long lines to develop. Using a two hole small cage feeder, he managed to get a few bonus fish early doors. Many of the anglers that were competing in the festival had qualified for the On The Flyer TV Winter Classic Final the following weekend. With £10,000 at stake, Many of the anglers were using the festival as a practice for the final. It was apparent quite quickly that the fish were feeding with gusto. As can be seen here by Martin Page stringing together a few decent early fish on the tip. As we venture to Warren Pool, you can see just how still and calm the conditions were on that day. Lee Kerry by fishing pellets had a great start and seemed to be pulling away from the field within the first couple of hours. One of our previous Meadowlands Festival winners Andy Bennett, a man that needs no introduction, had drawn peg 27 on Warren Pool. This particular peg had had great form in recent matches, so when Andy Bennett managed to pull it out of the draw bag, many thought that it was a foregone conclusion. Andy, fishing pellets over micros, was managing to get some of the better stamp of fish that were in the Warren Pool. On the opposite bank, Lee Kerry was catching with some gusto as well, which meant at this stage of the match, it was just too close to call who was leading the section at this point. One of the pegs that everybody wanted to avoid was peg 24 on Warren Pool, and unfortunately for Garbolino main man, Darren Cox, that was the number that stuck to his hands following the draw. This peg is in the lower bay of Warren Pool. You set back from the other pegs, and even though it looks great, it can be deceiving as it seems to have a lot less form in previous festivals than other pegs.
Having been absent from match fishing for a short while, it was great to see Alex Rimmer from Guru back on the bank fishing one of the main festivals. With the weather being so mild, as you can imagine, the silverfish were not the only thing with feeding on their mind. Andy Bennett, even though he'd managed to string together a few decent bream, had also got carp feeding in his peg, as you can see by this clip. In one section alone on Lambsdown, we had two former world champions sat next to each other. On peg 45, we had five times world champion, Alan Scoffhorn, who got off to a great match, catching Roach short. And on peg 44 next to him was former world champion, Sean Ashby, who was managing to catch better skimmers on the long pole. One in the Winning Ways trio, Richard Chapman, wasn't flustered at all about having two former world champions sat next to him. From peg 46 on Lambsdown, Rich managed to string together a few decent skimmers, fishing expander pellets over micros and also feeding some dampened four mills. Iowa star and England international Cameron Hughes was having somewhat of a frustrating day on the far bank. With 55 anglers in the competition, with five sections of 11, the far bank can sometimes be very tightly pegged. This means that sometimes this area is very hit and miss, as Cameron was unfortunately finding out on the day. Further on down on the far bank on peg 62 was Adam Wakeley. Now for those of you that have never seen Adam fish, he's probably one of the most aggressive feeders that you will find in match fishing. By fishing 4 mil expanders over micros and aggressively feeding dampened 4 mil pellets, Adam managed to string together quite a few decent skimmers and roach. As you can see by this clip, by using his one hand approach and bump bar, it shows why Adam is one of the most efficient, dangerous anglers in match fishing.
On the opposite bank, Guru and England international Matt Godfrey from Peg 19 was having a great day managing to snare some of the bigger skimmers within the lake. Fellow Guru ace and southern angler Ben Hag was also putting together a few decent sized fish from Peg 17. Let me leave you with the action from the rest of day one and we'll be back on day two to talk to you some more. Hi, it's Steve Seaborn. I'm fishing the uh, On The Flyer TV Madeline Silvers Classic here at uh, Madeline's Fishery in Coventry. Um, managed to draw peg 25 yesterday on Lambsdown. Um, fish pellets pretty much all day at 14 metres and weighed £54.8 and luckily managed to just win, win the day yesterday. Um, today I've drawn uh, 53 on Lambsdown. Not the best of areas, um, but I'll give it a go see what happens and see if we can do any good today. Cheers. Okay, it is day two of the Silver Cup for On The Flyer TV. And uh, it's very, very interesting because I'm back on Warren Pool. Now yesterday I was on Warren Pool peg seven and Warren Pool was rumored not to have been fishing so well, uh, but we've had a few mild days and yesterday it fished absolutely brilliant. Had an incredible days fishing, 54 pound, of skimmers put me second in the match and I won this lake so a great day really happy with that felt like I learned a few bits and unbelievably I'm back on Warren Pool today on peg five the very next peg um, I actually fished a, an on the flyer event in November and drew this same peg both days so I've been in this area quite a bit now this is completely different conditions to what I've had so far really strong wind it's a little bit of a point here and it's absolutely battering me there just sort of like ship me pole out and it's really naughty so it's going to be difficult to fish so i'm not sure what that's going to do hopefully the fish will feed but it could be actually difficult to fish and then on the old breast bet odds i've got one of the bookies favorites matt godfrey here bestest pal in the whole wide universe and uh, we stayed together last night and we were sharing information and he's drawn the peg i was on second in his section third in the match yesterday so we have got an incredible battle on our hands that we can talk about all the way home or not talk depending on how the result goes he's saying he would prefer a first for him and a second for me that's the ideal result i think uh, that would be a great result to be fair because then we've got sam collett 
Alan Scott on, Tyler Bird's over there, Darren Davis. It's a joke. Adam Palmer's here on four. It's ridiculous. The standard of Anglo is ridiculous. Uh, as you can see from the odds, there's some amazing uh, anglers here today. We're going to have a really good battle. I can't wait for it. Whatever the result, hoping for a good day. Well, this is day two of the On The Fly TV two-day festival at Medlands. Um, I had a great day yesterday, managed to win my section. Chuffed a bit, had a proper hard section. It's absolutely run with good anglers here. England internationals, Fishermania champs, and today is no different. But yesterday, I was on the end peg on the shallows on Lambsdown Lake, uh, peg 63. Had a lovely day's fishing, caught on pellets on the pole at 14 and a half metres. Dead simple, so hopefully learnt a few things for the final next week. And today, I've got an absolutely rock hard section. I've got Jamie Hughes one side, I've got Darren Cox the other, I've got Andy Bennett up there. And to be honest, I can name every angler in this section. Des, Des ship on the end peg, so definitely got my work cut out. But I think it's quite a good area by the sounds of it. I don't know the lake at all, but middle of the bank, windy as hell, so gonna have to hold on, hold on tight. But fingers crossed for a good day. It's been a fantastic festival so far. Bresbeck got involved and put, put some books on, which is definitely fantastic for the sport. So hopefully they continue with that support. Um, Hopefully he had a better me because I had good odds as well. So fingers crossed I don't let his down today. I'm going to try my hardest and yeah, hopefully nail a few bream. Right, so um, we're back here again at Madeline's, uh, the wonderful Madeline's, for day two of the um, On The Fly TV Silvers Cup, sponsored by Garbolino. Um, it's been a great event so far. The fisher is fishing really well. Uh, conditions have changed a little bit overnight. Slightly more wind today, uh, changed direction. But uh, had a good day yesterday. Uh, managed to win my section with just over 40 pounds. Um, so I'm on one point, which is what you're fishing for. You're fishing for points. Uh, so great start. Caught probably four pound in the first hour, short on casters, um, just some roach in that. And then I went long, fish pellets at 30 metres for the rest of the day. And that, that was it really, nice and simple. Just 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 fed to my bites, uh, caught lots of different size skimmers. So yeah, lo lo lovely days fishing. Um, today, I've drawn in a very good area um, on the deeps on Lambsdown Lake. As you can probably see along the section, I've got some absolutely fantastic anglers, but I, I, I did yesterday, to be honest, everywhere you look, it's absolute quality. So, um, Try and obviously get a repeat performance. Uh, the wind's going to hamper things a little bit today, but just going to fish the sim similar way to what I did yesterday. I did learn a couple of little tiny bits that were like really, really important yesterday. So I'm going to try and implement that again today. Um, and hopefully if it works, I can uh, come away with a good result again. But it's going to be tight, always is, when in this quality of field. So um, yeah, I'm going to get, get set up and, um, and crack on with the fishing and I hope you had a bet on me. <laughs> what a massive difference just one day makes. Gone was the mildest of day one, today was a much bitter and colder morning. It's hard to believe that just a day earlier, many anglers had been fishing in their t-shirts. Now having to wear several layers just to keep the cold at bay, it was clear it was gonna be a completely different day. Young Tyler Bird had drawn peg 27 on Warren Pool, the same peg that Andy Bennett had drawn the day previous. From the off, he was catching decent sized skimmers and roach under his feet, so he was certainly one to watch at the early stages of the match. New fish angler and Meadowlands regular Sam Collett was hoping for a much better day on day two. Having drawn peg 50 the day before, Sam had unfortunately come last in section. So sitting on peg nine on day two, he was hoping for a much better day. Darren Cox, having unfortunately drawn poor the day previous in peg 24 on Warren, was much more optimistic about his chances for today, having drawn peg 45 on the pump bank on Lambsdown.
Also on the pump bank, on peg 46, was Rob Swan, who was one of our section winners from the day previous. Unfortunately for Rob, he'd also drawn in the same section as Jamie Hughes, who was on peg 47, another one of our section winners from the first day. Andy Bennett, having drawn peg 27 on Warren, the first day one of the favoured pegs, had only managed to achieve third in section on the day one, having been beat by Lee Kerry and Johnny Jowett. Having drawn peg 42 on Pump Bank on the second day, a peg that is very well renowned for its smaller fish and roach, Andy certainly had his work cut out to gain some ground back. Even with the severe contrast and change of weather from day one, it was clear to see that many of the fish were still feeding. What sets Meadowlands apart from other venues in the UK, in my opinion, is the sheer volume of water and the depths of some of the pegs. On Lambsdown, pegs can easily reach 12 foot, and I feel like this is where those decent skimmers and roach like to hide when the weather's cooler. That coupled with the fishery owners and their expert fish care makes Meadowlands, in my opinion, one of the best silverfish venues in the country. Waco, with that typical aggressive feed style, again was amongst the decent fish, certainly making a charge for the lead. Des ship in the early stages of the match had struggled to string anything together. However, after reaching for his feeder rod, he was able to get amongst the better fish. As you can see from the sign behind his head, Bresbet were involved in this festival. What that meant was that betting was back into match fishing, which is an exciting new take in my opinion, and it meant that all you folks at home had a chance to put a few pennies on your favourite angler. So folks, I'm going to leave you to enjoy the rest of this festival. I hope you've enjoyed the commentary and the footage, and we hope to see you on the next one. Until then, tight lines.
Right then, folks, just before we go on to the main frame, as you know, we do do a, an optional £10 Super Pool where winner takes the all, non-accumulative. So I'm absolutely... Out. Boys, just listen up for a second, yeah? Absolutely over the moon for this one because it's absolutely one of me... I think he's one of the nicest human beings in the world. Biggest weight over the two days, weight of £55, picking up 550 quid. Tyler Bird. Brilliant, mate. Brilliant. Yeah. Right, so, moving on to the main frame. We're paying top eight. So, in eighth place, with six points... And a total weight of £90, 8 ounce, picking up 250 quid, Tyler Bird. Well done, pal. So, boys, as you know, those who have been on the festivals before, when you look in your envelope, I haven't stole the money, I pay this out electronically. So the envelopes are just for reference. Seventh overall, with five points and a weight of £64, 12 ounce, picking up 350 quid, Simon Fry. Well done, mate. Sixth overall, paying for, getting paid 450 quid with four points, total weight of 48 pounds, 12 ounce, Simon Willsmore. Send me your bank details later. Fifth overall, picking up 550 quid and four points, total weight of 73 pounds, 12 ounce, Andy Benny. Well done, Bob. Fourth overall, with a total weight of £74, four ounce, and got to say it was really close uh, in your section today, so it could have gone either way. With a total of four points, picking up 700 quid, Steve Seaborn. Well done, mate. So top three, as always, you get a lovely little glass trophy to take home with you. So three points, picking up 850 quid, a total weight of £66, 10 ounce, Lee Wright. I'll give you the box in a minute, pal. Cheers, mate. Second overall with three points, total weight of 73 pounds, six ounce, picking up 1,100 quid, Adam Wakeling. Cheers, pal. Just hold me hand, eh? And this year's champion, fishing an absolute blinder of a festival, with three points, a total weight of £95, four ounce, picking up 1,600 quid, Lee Kerry. There you go, pal. That's yours. I'll give you the trophy. I'll give you the box in a minute. So can I have the top three just to stay behind for a picture after? And I need a quick interview with you, pal. But that's it. Thanks, guys. As always, it's been filling. Thank you. No, thank you. So, folks, there you have it. A very worthy winner in Lee Kerry. Adam Wakeley nipping at his heels in second place and Lee Wright in third. If you'd like to get involved in any of our other festivals or events, please go over to our website, www.ontheflyerevents.com, where you'll find all the information you need. Also, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is free to do so, and follow us on Facebook. Until I see you on the bank next time, take care. Yeah, it's been an absolutely brilliant festival uh, run by Gary Rogers on the Flyer TV. I just want to say thanks to those guys for running these events. Without people like that running the events, it wouldn't happen. The anglers here have been ridiculous. It's one of the highest standard, if not the highest standard match I fish all year. It's just incredible how good these anglers are um, on this event. And that's shown there's slightly more professionalism come into it. Brez better have backed it. So I want to say thanks to them for giving us all a little bit more of a professional edge, if you like. The fishing myself, it's been amazing. I don't know of a better commercial silverfish than Medellin's. I'm sure there is others out there that are great, but Medellin's is the 
is the best I've been to in a long, long time. Both lakes are brilliant. I've been on Warren Pool both days, uh, which is one of the shallower lake. I've caught fish mainly on pellets. Um, caught a few on casters, but it's mostly pellet fishing for skimmers and bream. Caught 95 pound of skimmers in two days. That's unbelievable fishing. Um, and I'm looking at the weights, 20, 30 pound for fun throughout. So not only is that a testament to how good all the anglers are, but also how good the fishery is. So I'm absolutely made up to win this. Um, I really am. It really means something to me to win an event like this. It's a great event with great people and long may it continue.